another day, another Maker Advent, and the cheap yellow display from 2023 is back. Yeah, Brian Locke's pet project from last year, awesome piece of kit, cheap, accessible. It's back for 2024, but this time it's running MicroPython. Yep, so the cheap yellow display is in my hand right now, and it's running MicroPython, and there is an image. But what's the image of? Well, if I look out the window, it's raining and it's cloudy. It's also been really windy all night and it's kept me up, which is why I was awake at half past four hacking this. Anyway, this isn't a tutorial as such. It's more to show what you can do. I'm going to link to everything that I've used down below in the description so you can do it yourself. But the general um, process is this is an ESP32. It's one of the W room ones. Room. I don't know how we pronounce it. It's an ESP32 with a screen on it. Flash MicroPython for ESP32 onto this. Download some special libraries and away you go. And the libraries are the simple stuff. Simple. It's stuff to use the screen, which is an seamlessly, you don't, it's like I'm, I know it all off by heart. Uh, it's an ILI9341 display, that thing there. Now I've not got touch working on this yet. It does work, but I can't get it to work. So I'm sticking with this minute. It's a little weather app I've got. And I've got to think about the weather. Let's have a look, see. You put MicroPython on it. You put the libraries on it. You write some code. Away you go. There's a few little things here and there, but it's pretty self-explanatory. So I've got it running on this ThinkPad, an X390, 8th gen Intel Core i5. Uh, Ubuntu 2410 is running on it. And right now it is running Fonny. So yeah, I'll just prove it is running. There you go. It is using Ubuntu. It's running Fonny. And that is the code for this project. So I'm just going to go and, there you go, I'm on a different screen now. I've got some files on here. I've got boot, which runs whenever the machine powers up. Um, CIDR, which is one of the libraries you need to install, as well as ILI9341. We've got overcast.raw. I'll get to that in a minute. That's a raw image file. Secrets.py, which is where I keep my SSID and password for Wi-Fi connections. Weather, which is this uh, program here. XGLCD font is... Yeah, basically how to put uh, words and text on a screen. And that one, I've got no idea, but you need it. And it's, if you don't have it, it doesn't work. I didn't look that one up. On this machine, I have got Python running as well. And I need to convert the images that I want to use, in this case, Overcast. So let's just clear that. And there we go. I need to convert Overcast from a JPEG into something that the cheap yellow display understands. That's an RGB 565 image. So there's, there's some scripts on the GitHub for this. So this is Rui and Sara Santos's page. Random nerd tutorials. Excellent resource. Oh, seriously. I've cribbed a hell of a lot from this today. So I'll go to the image section. There we go. Um, they suggest using that MicroPython RAW file to test it, but you can then use this image 2 RGB 565 Pi tool. So you click on that, it takes you to the file, download that, make it executable, run it, which is what I'm going to do now. And it spits out a raw file. Now because the screen is 320 by 240, make sure you match the resolution. Otherwise it will have an absolute temper tantrum at you and go, I'm not playing that. It has to be exact. If it's too small, it won't load it properly. It'll just say there's a buffer error. If it's too big, it'll look like static on the screen. So get it right. So let's go to the proper demo page. I'm not going to step through the code line by line. I'm just going to give you a basic gist of what's going on. All the imports to make all the magic happen. Okay. Setting up the screen, telling the cheap yellow display and the code where to find the screen and how to use it. Setting up the size, setting up what the background color is going to be, and also clearing the screen. We've got a function called load image and you can guess what this does. Yes, it loads an image and it takes one parameter, which is the name of the file. And it's then going to draw that image to the top left. So zero, zero at the resolution of 320 by 240. We've got connect to Wi-Fi. So it's going to connect to your Wi-Fi. And that's where I use secrets, secrets.ssid, secrets.password. They're just, so they're just variables in the secrets file. Get weather condition. It's going to get the weather condition for my current longitude and latitude. That's pretty much Blackpool. And then it's going to map the returned codes to weather conditions. So zero clear sky. We're currently a uh, drizzle light number 51. So it's going to build a request URL now. It's then going to use that URL and then it's going to store the output as a response object, i.e. a variable that has the data inside it. If it comes back OK, it's going to load that. It comes back as a JSON file, good old JSON. And then it goes through an if, if current weather 
So whatever code, what is it? Tell us what it is. Get the condition out of there. Print the condition to the screen. I also print the type condition. You don't have to do that. That was me debugging. I didn't know what it returned. Was it an object like a dictionary or a list or was it something like a string? In this case, it was a string, but I needed to know that. And then I've just done a really hodgepodge. It's only got one thing at the minute because it is drizzle light at the moment. It loads the image over cast raw if the condition is drizzle light. Now you can have lots of conditions in there, else print the current weather, weather data is not available and then another else if it completely fails and then close the response, handle an exception, and away you go. And then we go to the main body of code at the bottom, connect to the Wi-Fi, and then forever, get the current condition, do all we just said, return it, show it on the screen, and then wait for 10 minutes. And that process will give me an image like this. So there you go. So this could also be a lovely sun, it could be snow, whatever you want. I've just found that you haven't got a lot of uh, space in here for storage, so, I'm going to have to implement a way in MicroPython to use a micro SD card. It's simple, I've just not had a chance to do it yet. But this is more proof of concept in that MicroPython on the cheap yellow display does work. So there we go. That is day 22, believe it or not. If you're wondering about the IKEA Windrichtning thing, I've hit an issue with this. And I think it is problem in chair, not in computer, i.e me. I can get data out of it and I can read the data and I can now understand what it's doing but what's happening when I run the code is the CircuitPython device which is an ESP32C3 is erroring and falling over every single time. It will do the initial send a message to notify saying hey look I'm online but then when it goes to actually do the oh right what's the air quality like it fails. Now this is going to be a problem with my workflow in my brain so it may take me a bit longer than a maker event to get it done but I'm going to persevere but right now I'm hitting a, a big crunch time so 20 second I've got two more videos after this and then that's it maker events over not a lot of time watch this space is what I'm saying in a convoluted way anyway that's all for today see you later